Um, hi, good afternoon class. Today we're going to be reviewing about how a bill becomes a law. So in order to understand how a bill becomes a law, we have to understand who makes the laws, and that's the Congress. So in the Congress, um, there's two houses, the Senate, and the Senate has two members per state, which means that since there's 50 states, we have 100 in total. And the House of Representatives is based on population, so there's 435 in total. So now we start the journey of how a bill becomes a law. And first, a bill begins as an idea. Um, where does this idea come from? Well, it can come from the citizens, just like you and me. You can contact your local congressmen, and if you have an idea for a law, you can call them and tell them about your idea. If your representative likes the idea, um, they can research it and write out a bill. So con Congress people have to talk to other Congress people and get support from other people, um, sometimes between their own party lines, in order for it to get um, to be able to go along with the process of becoming a law. And once the bill has enough support, it can be introduced onto the floor. Okay, so once the bill is introduced, it, it can either be introduced in the House or in the Senate, but it has to go through both of the houses as the same bill. It can't be a different bill even in the slightest way. Um, the bill has to be assigned to the standing committees and there's like specific committees like agriculture, education, stuff like that. So depending on the bill it goes to the specific standing committee and if the standing committee, re the standing committee can review it, research it and revise the bill and choose whether or not they want to put it up for debate. Yes? Um. Is there any chance for the common people to give their input about the bill? They can only call their Congress people. Okay. They can't. They can't be like. There has been occasions where, where they're putting it in front of the floor, like people come and talk. But for the most part, it's the Congress people that are, the ones that are debating the bill. Um, and if the bill. If the standing committee still has any questions about the bill, they can send it to a subcommittee, which would be like a very like specific committee that they would be like experts on the whatever the bill is. Like if it's about agriculture, they would be like very specific on the region and everything so they can really know um, how to revise or how, what to do to the bill in order to make it good. Yeah. Okay. So, once the bill has been um, approved by the committee, it's sent or reported, like they like to say, and then the debate starts. So in the House of Representatives, the debate's very limited because there's a lot of people, there's 435. But in the Senate, you can basically talk for as long as you want. So once the bill is debated, um, the representatives can explain why they agree or disagree, and it's debated in different manners in the different um, houses because of how they're like structured. Um, and the representatives can also make recommendations on like things they would like to change. And when when like all the changes have been made, or they feel like that's the bill that they want to put forward for a vote, they vote on it. Okay, so in order for a bill to pass, it needs to get the simple majority, which would be 51 in the Senate and 218, yeah, in the House of Representatives, which would be half plus one. But there, there is other, there's kind of loopholes around that because you can, a bill can be filibustered, which would mean that it would have to get two thirds of a, two thirds of the votes in order for it to pass, which happens. Uh, I think it happens more now than it used to. And yeah, it makes it basically impossible for a bill to pass because if you need two thirds of the whole um, House or the Senate, it's pretty hard to get that many people. So, so they must pass in both houses in order for it to become, do you have a question? No. Oh, sorry. Okay, so 
So once it's um, passed in both houses of Congress, it's sent to the president. And the president can either, one, sign the bill and it becomes a law. He can veto the bill, which, would, which means that he refuses to pass or sign the bill, which means that it wouldn't become a law. Or if, if in the case of the president vetoing the bill, um, the Congress can override the veto with two-thirds uh, if they get two-thirds of a vote in the House of Representatives and the Senate, the bill can be overridden and it can become a law, even if it's vetoed by the president. And there's also something called the pocket veto, which is basically like if, if the session of the Congress is over within like 10 days or something, um, and the president doesn't sign it, like he just forgets about it or he can choose to, and the session of the Congress is over, it's basically a veto. Thank you.